All right, so here I'm going to show you how we can use the FT2232 driver to program this using URJTAG. So the first thing we need is an MCS file. Um, so here I've generated that. So I'll create a new project. And you can say create a project file. In this window, hit prepare a boundary scan file, SVF format. SVF is what we're going to be creating. Um, so you can save this somewhere. And I'm just going to find a directory to save in. Okay. Um, now we need to add a device to the chain. So Assuming we didn't have the bit file representing the device, what we can do is we can add the generic file. So this is in the Xilinx folders. Um, and you basically just have to go through until you're in this ISC directory and you can find your device. So for example, I'm adding a Spartan 6. Um, and in the data directory, there's all these BSD files. When you add it, uh, for this to work, what you want to add is just the base. You don't want the one that has the package information there. So we just add this um, 150 device, Spartan 6 150, and make sure, for example, there's a 150T that you're using the right one. Uh, so that's the right one for me. So it adds the device here. Now we need to add a flash device. So, as I said, we needed the MCS file, and you may already have one. In this case, I've generated one. Um, so we're just going to find that file. Oops, there's the wrong directory. So it's this project, and this is the MCS file. Uh, so the files, they do get quite big, so this will be a bit of a problem. We'll see. It just means stuff takes a while to go. So this window will pop up. Select the appropriate type of PROM. On this board, I have this M25P6, 25P64 device. Okay. Now, now what we need to do is run program. When you run program, it's going to write it to that SVF file. Um, we can uncheck check verify because that takes a long time to do. Make sure the erase is done before and hit OK. So now it's going to be writing everything to this SVS file. We can see in the bottom corner, boundary scan generation. generation. So it's initially downloading the core file. So it's going to write the bitstream that will download to the FPGA first and then erase and program your flash. Um, so in the background, that's going to be working here. And we'll sort of wait and take note of where it's writing it. And I will open the other file here. So it does take a little bit of time to write this. OK, there we go. So it's done. It's written this SVF file. Um, so we can just exit from this program. and give it a second so it's actually showing you some of the commands it's used which if you want to run this in batch mode can be very useful to remember um, so if I open the directory it saved it in and again remember it's open ADC SASBO W um, which is this directory here what we'll see is that the um, the file will be quite large, so let me just refresh. Uh, where is it? So we need the SVF file, um, which is right here. So you can see it's 223 megabytes. Uh, so it's a huge file. There's a lot of instructions. But we're going to try using it anyway. So we copy it to the programming tools directory. So I have another folder here. Or just move it actually in this case because I don't care. Um, and then we take note of that name. And I'm just going to add it to the script here. So it's going to call 
you are a JTAG, you're a JTAG, um, underscore SVF.bat, and this file is doing the program. So I have the board connected up, um, and I'm just going to run this batch file. And if this is working, so you can see that it's connecting to the board and it'll begin downloading. Um, so in a second here, a little window will pop up that tells you it's parsing it. This part will take a very long time because that SVF file is so big. Um, this takes, I haven't timed it, but five or 10 minutes. At the end of it, you should get something that says basically TDO matched OK which is telling you that everything works. So there's the parsing. If you get errors, um, try rerunning it. Make sure your JTAG chain is clean and clear. And for the most part, if you get errors, it also could mean you've specified the wrong device in impact. Because it's not auto-detecting it, you need to make sure you specify the right device. So good luck, and I hope this your JTAG download worked okay.